We are almost 350 hours into our current playthrough, so it is time for a world tour. So if you're new here, this is a good time to jump on board. Or if you're a long time sub, you can reminisce with me over how much we've accomplished so far. But regardless, I hope you enjoy. Hello everyone, I'm Kibitz and welcome back to Satisfactory. Where today we're going to be doing a world tour of our Let's Play world. And if you're new, I upload tons of Satisfactory content and live stream it over on Twitch. So remember to subscribe, leave a like, and check out my Twitch page. Anyway though, we started this world in update 3 when it dropped because the whole game was changed. From changing all the recipes, to literally adding a new element you could play with in the game. So yeah, we pretty much had no choice but to restart. So we did in the newly updated desert biome here. And in the beginning, there was only filth. Because instead of making a proper base right off the bat, I made temporary Mark 1 and Mark 2 starter bases, which are simply get things made. You hook a resource to a machine, that's it. Just getting her done and learning about the new update and how things work now. So we played around with a new resource sink, awesome shop, factory cart. And then we finally started messing around with pipes and built our very first coal plant here. But then with all that extra power, we were able to set up some pretty thick production lines in our Mark 1 and Mark 2 starter bases. So we made our epic steel engine design to get things moving and grooving. Because our big goal in the early game was to get to Mark 2 miners and Mark 4 belts. Of course though, we kind of went a little overboard as we do with things. And the second we had a little extra power, we needed more power. So we built like 50,000 more coal power plants. Which is pretty good for now. But making that took about 30,000 years, so after that, we started to figure out how the hyper tubes worked and made some of our very first basic hyper tube systems and had a lot of fun with them. Only died like once. Totally. 100%. But then after that uh fiasco, it was finally time to move onto our main base. So we automated all of the space elevator parts for tiers 5 and 6. Tore down the Mark 1 and Mark 2 starter bases, and then began construction on our main base, from which we'll take over the world. But of course, taking over the world is no easy feat, and you kind of have to be organized in order to do that. So one of our very first projects was to make an auto-refilling storage room, and of course we had to make it look as good as possible, because we're going to be spending a lot of time here. And generally speaking, aesthetics are a very high priority. Cause there ain't no point in taking over the world if you don't do so in style, brother. Gotta keep it spicy. Spicy like our HyperTube hub. Or should I say hubs? Because we built two of these incredible HyperTube hubs in our base to take us all around the world. So this HyperTube hub takes us to places outside of our base, while the other focuses on taking us to places inside the base. Because once you start building on this scale, it takes a long time to get places. And stairs don't typically cut it. And also, the hypertubes add a really cool aesthetic to the outside of the base. So of course, I wanted to have as many as possible. But as we started to dramatically scale things up, I got more and more nervous that we're gonna crash our power grid. So at the center of our base, we have our main power plug area. So this powers all the floors to the base with one main one that connects all of our power generating machines to all of the power consumption machines, all in one place. So if our grid ever was to fail, we'd have a decent way of turning things back on, instead of just having complete and utter pandemonium. But around this time when we had the stable power grid, we also went and moved in for Mark II miners and the Mark IV belt by building a huge new steel factory. With three of the steel engines making a whopping 810 steel ingots per minute. And among other things, we are also making 40 encased industrial beams per minute too, for all of the Mark IV belts. So with our base and our technology, it was time to move into tiers 5 and 6 where we started to play around with oil. And oh boy did we! We hit the beach near our base and started gathering around 3,000 crude oil per minute. Or maybe 2,400? Some huge amount of oil. But we piped all that nonsense up, and then all the way around a giant mountain, directly into our base. 
And what do you think we're gonna do with all of that black gold? <laughs> Isn't it obvious? Of course we're gonna get more power. Because we always need more power. So after getting things organized and unlocking a few alternate recipes, we figured out a way to make an absolutely ludicrous amount of turbo fuel to feed fuel power plants and solve our power needs until way in the late game. And it all primarily orbits around this recipe, the diluted packaged fuel recipe, which takes heavy oil residue and packaged water to make 60 fuel per minute. And effectively what this does is it turns water into oil because the only other recipe to make fuel is just with residual fuel, and effectively you have to just use crude oil. But yeah, this one uses water and the residue to make the fuel instead. But because we had already gathered so much crude oil before, we needed to grab pretty much twice the amount of water to make this plan work. So beside our coal factory that we initially made, we made this super massive water extractor farm and packaging station over here. And with this, we have started to pack up water and send it back to Beast to make the packaged fuel, which eventually became our turbo fuel. And since we're making such an obscene amount of turbo fuel, we need to make about 700 fuel power generators in order to use it all. And because we just have to make such an obscene amount of fuel generators, we started this project behind our base that we've dubbed the Death Star. Because we have to make so many fuel generators, it will cover the entire desert you see before you. And we kind of ended up calling it the Death Star because we have all of the pipes and all of these trenches here. And it's all going to be kind of gray, so it kind of looks like the Death Star. And the Death Star had like a surface of trenches and all that kind of jazz. And there's something to like spice it up. And yeah, it's looking pretty cool already. And we're only about a th not even a third of the way into the project. Maybe like 20% of the way. So yeah, we're going to be continuing to add on to this for a very long time. But in the meantime, it gave us a good chunk of power to work with. So we're finally able to start some production here. So we first consumed the desert biome of all available resources, brought it up into our beast through these item spines, and then built our first processing floor, which has 120 smelters in it produces 300 concrete per minute, and thanks to these ore doubling recipes in refineries, we're able to make a pretty chunky amount of caterium and quartz crystals for later production. But as our beast got taller and taller, we needed to do some things to spice it up. Like we have these item elevators and oil elevators and all this stuff on the side, but it wasn't really enough. So we kind of went off on a tangent and built this bunker over here which is represented by this kind of a cool structure on the right side of the base. And production wise, what we're doing in here is we're just processing all of the organic materials into liquid biofuel. So in case our power grid ever does go down, we have this as an option. But now with organics dealt with and we have all of these materials in base, it was time to look upon the horizon because we had to consume the rest of the world. But of course, consuming a planet full of resources takes time, and you have to do all the setup and the locations, and then you have to get to A and B. So we set up an airport with these hypertube launchers, which can pretty much send us anywhere on the map in about the snap of our fingers. So say we wanted to get to, I don't know, let's just say this side of the map. Well, away we go. Like I'm not kidding. With the jetpack and the hypertube launches everywhere is available to us. But right now, there's nothing else really around the map. We only have one out of base place. So let's kind of scoot our way back here and not land in the swamp. Thank you. Cool. And let's check out our train system. Because now we can get around the world in like a snap. It was time to go and set up bases out in the land and bring everything back home. So, of course, we needed trains. And in our infinite wisdom, we had made plans for trains long, long ago. And in the foundation of our base, near the legs here, we had reserved this huge area to build exclusively train stations. So we have about one, two, three, four, five, about ten, about a hundred freight cars worth of train stations here. And we organize all those items underneath the trains. 
and they'll all end up going to production lines. Like this one up here, where we're dealing with our first batch of 900 oil per minute. And if all things go according to plan, we'll have all these three floors filled with refineries and be producing an insane amount of rubber and plastic and coal and all the jazz. And very fortunately for us, once we started messing with fluids and fluid trains, they got a huge buff. So the freight cars for fluids used to only hold 500 cubic meters of any liquid, and then they got buffed to 1600 cubic meters of liquid, which was incredible. Because before that update, we started playing around with packaging fuel, which would have taken a lot of extra power and been significantly more inconvenient. But still in the meantime, to check it out, we did end up packing up some of the oil and sending it back in a train. But we left this system as is because it might come in handy in the future. Because pumping liquids vertically is a huge inconvenience. And I'm sure it'll be real nice to have some stuff packaged that we just need to bring up on belts. And then we don't need to deal with pump Mageddon again. But with a train network and an airport, we continued to expand and gather all the other resources we could find. And we extended our train network way, way out into new unconquered biomes. And in our latest big project, we made a huge outpost out in this area, kind of near this hill biome here, to gather up a bunch more materials, gather more water, and establish ourselves outside of the map. And after 300 hours, we finally started automating some trucks as well, because they work very well with trains. And they're just fun to mess with. And that pretty much catches you guys up on the entire playthrough. So we have all of this infrastructure in place to bring back as many items as we want. And now in our playthrough, we're gonna start entering phase three, where we build all of our super machines and actually start using all these items we are collecting. So the base is just gonna get exponentially taller. And then of course, we're gonna start producing all of the space elevator parts, getting into tier seven, and then probably getting into more modding because this series is also lightly modded as well. We're using a permaday, so it's always daytime, that just helps me record, and we're using the area actions mod, which is how I'm flying around and doing all this camera work. And the mods will be available in the description. And along with that, you'll also find my save file, because I'm gonna be sharing that with you guys so you can check out my world and maybe add on your own little adjustments, or just goof around in here. But anyway, that pretty much catches you guys up on our playthrough here, so I hope you guys enjoyed and subscribe if you want to continue with us on this epic journey. But for now, have a fantastic rest of your day, and bye bye <laughs>